This is Digital Marketing Depot, broadcasting live. I'm Karen Burka, your webinar producer. Thank you for joining us today for How to Use Intelligent Site Search to Increase Conversion. We are very pleased to welcome Mark Foysand, Chief Marketing Officer at Coveo, and John Rossman, Digital Experience Manager at Motorola Solutions. Now, before I turn the webinar over to our speakers, I want to tell all of you a couple of things. If you need some help or have a question for our speakers, just use the Q&A box and we will do our best to help you. If you want to learn more about our sponsor, Coveo, or Digital Marketing Depot, there are some widgets at the bottom of your screen. Just click on them and they will take you where you want to go. Remember that you can customize your audience console to move or resize any windows that you have open. Now, we are going to hear a lot of great content today. So I wanted to let you know we are recording this broadcast and we will make it available for viewing on demand this afternoon. I'll send an email out when it's ready. So with that business taken care of, let me make some more formal introductions. Mark Flosshand has more than 20 years of marketing, sales, and general management experience in the technology industry, spanning blue chip and startup companies across three continents, including Apple, Adobe, Business Objects, and SAP. John Rossman has worked at Motorola since 2006 in a variety of roles, leading some of the company's largest digital initiatives and learning all aspects of digital marketing. Prior to joining Motorola, John worked as a developer and project manager at educational software company Vantage Learning. Now, audience, you can see more complete bios and contact information for our speakers on the left side of your console. Remember, if you have questions for our industry experts, please make good use of that Q&A box. I'll get to as many of those questions live after the formal presentations. So with that, I'm going to turn the webinar over to Mark to get us started. Mark, there's your first slide. Karen, thank you very much. And welcome, everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you are in the world. Uh, we're delighted today to really uh, look at uh, a technology leader, uh, Motorola Solutions' this journey to delivering more personalized and effort web, effortless web experiences. Uh, and along the way, really get a, a glimpse of uh, how they're coupling the whole search experience to really give a much more personalized experience to the folks that they engage with. Uh, what we will be covering uh, in short order is really just reflecting on the fact that for many organizations, they are changing the way that they have, they go about dealing with their customers because of the daily interactions that we as consumers uh, undertake. We've been conditioned through 20 years of Google, Amazon, YouTube, and the like to expect much more personalized interactions really with everyone we do business with. And that has translated beyond sort of the consumer realm directly into those organizations that do business with businesses. And so what it forces is all of us to really think about how we respond to that increased expectation that every individual has, whether they're uh, doing stuff for themselves or indeed in a professional capacity for their companies. 72% of people expect vendors to personalize the digital experience according to their needs. And, you know, the result of that is that we're seeing this trend towards uh, B2B experiences becoming increasingly consumer-like. Uh, coupled with data here from Salesforce that uh, reflects 67% of people are willing to switch vendors for something that is more of a consumer-like experience. We also see businesses using consumer channels to even, you know, advertise their wares and services in sort of the social media channels that people may interact with over the weekend that inform, you know, their opinion when they go back to work on Monday morning. Uh, and so this blending of expectations between the personal and, and the professional realm are the realities that companies like Motorola Solutions are dealing with in terms of making sure they meet and beat their own customers' expectations. Um, and fundamentally, you know, where do you start with this? Well, uh, we fundamentally believe that really centering around the customer and making every experience more relevant to them means that every interaction has to count at every touch point. Uh, how do you ensure that all of the data that you're gathering about your customers, uh, be they personal customers or business buyers, is put they perform what would be more relevant and more specific to them. 
you know, enterprises have to make business more personal. If you take the opportunity at every interaction to uh, either improve that brand experience or the corollary, don't and see it detract from it, uh, you have a direct impact on how those folks think about you moving forwards with you know, increasing positivity or, or, or otherwise. Central to this approach really is harnessing the power of technology to automatically improve the relevance of each of these interactions across each of these touch points. And this is this notion of being able to deliver personalization at scale. So I think one of the things that I'm really excited about in this webinar is the opportunity to talk specifically with you know, a real company that is putting this to work in real life. Uh, so we'll segue to talk to Motorola about their digital transformation journey. The company has fundamentally reinvented itself over the last years, streamlining its business and, and focusing on mission-critical solutions for its customers. You know, we see this quote from uh, uh, Chicago Business that uh, the stock has obviously responded and, and clearly they're successfully going through this digital transformation. Along the way, they really wanted to ensure they became a leading digital business too. Part of that came about because their customers expressed difficulty in finding content on their websites, as an example. The digital experience manager at Motorola Solutions, John, uh, John Roshman, and his team decided to improve it and go one step further to deliver a much more personalized and relevant experience. They also decided to partner with Kaveo. We're delighted to have John on the webinar today to tell us about it. So welcome, John. Great. Thank you so much, Mark, and welcome, everybody. So in 2011, Motorola split into Motorola Mobility and Motorola Solutions. And from the information on the slide here, you can get a sense for the size of the Motorola Solution business. Uh, Motorola Solutions business portfolio includes two-way radios, public safety LTE, command center software, video surveillance and analytics technology, as well as managed and support services. At Motorola, we really view communication, at, communication systems as a lifeline, and we're focused on advancing that lifeline. Uh, we strive to innovate in mission-critical industries, from smarter applications to natural interfaces to compelling services. We're always trying to challenge the status quo. Now, Motorola has been around since 1928. In fact, last year, we just celebrated our 80th anniversary. And throughout our long history of revolutionizing communications, we've established very strong relationships with our customer base. These relationships have really helped Motorola's business to thrive. But they may have let us off the hook a little bit with respect to raising the bar on our digital experience. The times have changed. Our business has changed. We're moving more towards a solution software and service-centric business. And it has become imperative for us to evolve our digital experience accordingly. Otherwise, we really risk falling behind. So we have heard from some of our customers that they are facing some challenges doing business with Motorola solutions uh, online. And our Customer journey was a bit fragmented from what someone might buy to what they are buying to what they actually bought. The experience between pre and post sales was somewhat broken, and it was really at the end of the day just making it a little bit difficult to do business with us, which of course is not, not a good thing. So in March of 2018, Motorola began our digital transformation journey. Our vision, as outlined here on the slide, is a unified, digitized, and personalized customer experience that enables self-service, enhanced and continuous conversion, improved customer satisfaction, as well as process automation. Motorola has organized our digital transformation program into three tracks. First, the engagement track, and this track is owned by my uh, team within Global Marketing on the digital team, and we are really tasked with improving the digital front door. We view MotorolaSolutions.com as the kind of the primary entry point into digital engagement with Motorola. 
As part of the digital transformation program, the goals of the engagement track include increasing website traffic, improving the quality and the quantity of the leads, uh, or excuse me, of, the, of leads by elevating our experience, uh, and by improving a, a user's ability to research, receive quotes, and really just generate a query. Some of the projects that we've taken on as part of the engagement track include, include redesigning MotorolaSolutions.com, simplifying our site navigation, introducing filter and compare capabilities onto our site, allowing our users to compare similar products. And of course, our new site search, which we'll dive into certainly more uh, on this webinar, as well as our new thought leadership blog. And also, really, this track was tasked with establishing foundational analytics capabilities. The second track of our digital transformation program, we kind of refer to as our commerce track, driven by our sales officer operations teams within Motorola. This track's goal is really to deliver frictionless commerce interactions to buy and reorder select products, software, and services from Motorola. As part of the commerce track, um, just recently we established our first foundational e-commerce platform that's integrated with our coding and ERP system. We launched shop.motorolasolutions.com uh, late last year. This is the first e-commerce platform actually hosted by Motorola. In the past, we used to uh, work with a third party to do some of our e-commerce, uh, but now we've got our own platform. And right now, we're just offering direct-to-consumer purchase for some of our accessories, some of our consumer radios, as well as repair parts, and we'll look to expand that over time. And then finally, the third track of our digital transformation program, which is what we refer to as our service track. This track is really looking at just providing better service. We want to provide an intuitive single point of access for service management, learning, usage, and upgrades. And we're looking at streamlining user registration and account management, providing a single sign-on, uh, providing single sign-on access, and unifying our users' access to all of their tools. Motorola Digital Transformation is obviously a, a very large program. It's a sig significant investment for the company, and there's a lot of complexity. Some of that complexity is, is due to Motorola's business model. We've got a vast portfolio of offerings, and we're really, as we've mentioned, transitioning into more of a software and services business. Our digital transformation has been a company-wide effort. Uh, we have team members from marketing, our central technology office, IT, sales operations, software and service enablement teams. Motorola's web presence is we actually have 16 regional websites, so 16 MotorolaSolutions.com websites, five of which are in English, 11 of which are in foreign languages. To this point, our digital transformation program has really been focused on North America. Uh, but we have rolled out some of the updates to our other English locales, and in the future, we plan to roll out more elements globally. We also are targeting six personas as part of our digital transformation program listed here, our direct customer, consumers, our guests and prospects, our partners, our employees, and even our investors. The technology stack that we've employed as part of our program includes Adobe Experience Manager as our CMS, We've transitioned uh, our search tool from Lucene to Caveo. For our shop.motorolasolutions.com uh, commerce site, we're using Oracle Commerce Cloud. For marketing, uh, marketing automation, we use Eloqua. And for single sign-on, we use Okta. So now I'm just going to touch a little bit on our legacy search experience. Um, it really had this screenshot demonstrates one of the major challenges, which which were, which was that quite frequently we were finding, as in fact, up to 35% of searches were returning no results. Our legacy search experience had a somewhat limited user interface. Uh, relevancy was not great, and we had really limited controls and levers to affect relevancy. We did not have federated search, so we weren't able to. We weren't able to pull in search results from multiple sources. And we really had a high, a high percentage of searches ending in no results. You know, data indicates that people who perform a search on your website are twice, if not more, likely to convert. 
but not if they're performing a search and not getting any results. So we clearly knew that we had an opportunity here for a better experience. So as part of our digital transformation program, uh, we knew we had to improve our site search. Uh, internally, the business, and myself included, put together robust business requirements, and we, we collaborated with our IT organization to look for the best search tool available to meet our needs. During that process, we were able to identify Coveo. Coveo is a leader in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for Insight Engines. We reached out to them. They were able to very quickly put together a pilot to demonstrate their capabilities and how they could meet some of our requirements. And pretty quickly, we knew that they were the right choice for us. So now I'll just dive into some of the capabilities and features available on our new site search using Caveo that we are now taking advantage of. One feature that we're leveraging is contextualized search results. Motorola has now rolled out our new site search with Caveo on five of our English websites. And on each of those sites, you'll see content that's really local to, to the site. On a site-by-site -site basis, you can contextualize results by dictating which uh, sources are informing search on that site. So for example, our shop.motorolasolutions.com uh, shop that we launched recently is only available in North America. So you won't see results from that shop pulled into our non-North America sites. We also have the ability on MotorolaSolutions.com for our users to log in. Uh, we have partner users. We actually have internal or employee users, and we have customer users. And we can actually have the results returned um, contextual to the actual users who, who are performing the search. And finally, and as mentioned here, we can feature search results on each of our search experiences. And again, these can be set at a regional level. Another feature that we're taking advantage is query suggestion. So Caveo's machine learning suggests when a user is typing into search, the machine learning model uh, engine will suggest popular search terms based on the number of queries and clicks associated with those queries. And Motorola is also looking at enhancing this with suggested results. So not only would a user see some popular search terms as they're performing a search, but they might, we, we might are looking at also presenting uh, popular results right in the search box as well. In, ad in addition, Mot um, Motorola's new search offers query correction. And here there's kind of two varieties. One, there's the notion of autocorrect. So if a user performs a search and there are no results, but the Caveo machine learning engine is able to recognize that the user may have intended another search, it can automatically update the search to perform it for the corrected term. So that's autocorrect. It also offers sort of a did you mean feature. In this case, a user might perform a search and it might match some results, but the Caveo engine is able to recognize that the user may have actually meant something else. So it doesn't automatically up the, update the search, but what it does is it offers you the a did you mean option where you can click the alternative term and perform a search for that term instead. So these are all mechanisms that can try to help the user find what they're looking for instead of performing a search and getting no results. So I talked a little bit about one of the major issues with our legacy search and no results being returned. One of the features we were able to implement in our new search experience is sort of a more intelligent no results page. So we're certainly not seeing uh, users get no results as often as we were in the past. In fact, it's very infrequent at this point. But upon the instance that a user might encounter this page, instead of sending them to a dead end, we're offering them some popular search terms based on searches and clicks, as well as some popular results. So at least here, um, we can direct them to you know, what other people are looking for instead of giving them no information. Sort of as a summary, Motorola using Coveo search has really met all of the pain points that we were experiencing with, or addressed all of the pain points we were experiencing with our leg a legacy search experience. Coveo offers unified search um, and ranking. 
We've got our new search experience has very intuitive filters. We've got machine le uh, learning powered query suggestions, an intelligent no results page, which as I mentioned, we're not seeing users hit quite as much, which is a good thing. In fact, 97% of visitors to our new search experience are actually finding results. And one of the other features Caveo offers that um, we could probably do a full hour on, uh, but we won't have time on today's webinar, is really robust reporting available out of the box. And this is uh, a lot of data that can really give you great insights into how your users are using your search experience um, and giving and pre presenting opportunities for you to improve. So we've launched, we launched uh, Coveo in December of last year, so it's been about two months. Um, we are already seeing some really positive results, and we'll, of course, look to continue improving and refining over time. Here we just highlight some of the data, some of the improvements we've seen since we launched Coveo. Uh, a 23% increase in improvement on the query click-through rate, a 12% improvement on visit click-through rate, and a 6% more query click-through with machine learning than without machine learning. So these are all metrics that have, since we launched Caveo, improved within the, our search experience itself, and we look for these to continue to include, um, improve over time. And we are also regularly meeting with our Caveo success manager to really understand the data that's available in the Caveo admin console so that we can, we can leverage it um, to improve our search experience moving forward. This slide just kind of summarizes some of the, some of the um, outcomes that we've already seen since Motorola began our digital transformation journey. Uh, we have seen increased organic search traffic as a primarily, primary driver of traffic to our site, uh, certainly an increase in e-commerce activity, transactions, and revenue and an increase in customer engagement powered by more interactions with search. So we actually have a lot more engagement with the search experience itself. Increased time on site, a decrease in bounce rate. We're noticing, uh, we're noticing quicker access to our content on the site through to some of the navigational changes we've made. And we're also seeing a, a good amount of traffic to our newly designed pages. So that sort of concludes my overview of Motorola Solutions' digital transformation journey and the evolution of our site search with Motorola. With that, I'll turn it back over to you, Mark. Excellent. John, thank you very much. Uh, really great story. Uh, and perhaps just before we go on, maybe I can, uh, you know, pick your brain on a couple of things. Um, you know, bring us up to date. So what are your, kind of, what are your colleagues and customers saying about it now? Sure. So Motorola plans to run our customer satisfaction survey again this summer, but the sentiment so far has been really positive, uh, especially including, you know, among our colleagues. A lot of what we did in our initial phase of digital transformation was foundational. So the impact of the end customer is not extensive as we believe it ultimately will be, but overall, again, sentiment has been really positive. Our engagement and commerce indicators are certainly trending in the right direction. Super. And in terms of this overall digital transformation program, what are your next steps? So in, 2000, in 2018, last year was really a year of firsts for us with a lot of huge heroic efforts to achieve some unprecedented, uh, unprecedented achievements in our digital space. But in this year, we really plan to pivot to more of a sustainable operating model for increased efficiency and better predictability. Some of the projects that we're endeavoring upon this year were, you know, we've launched Coveo Search as, as our search experience. Now we're looking to enhance that, add some additional sources, make some UI refinements, and I mentioned this suggested results capability that we're looking to add. Our, our new Motorola Solutions blog, um, we're looking to add some capabilities there, including certain things like related posts so we can engage our users even further. And as I mentioned previously, to extend some of these new capabilities beyond North America to some of our regional sites. 
from an e-commerce perspective, we're, we're looking to multiply our, our orders as much as tenfold. There's some, uh, we're looking to expire some of our legacy customer support systems this year. And we're really focused on elevating our customer and partner experiences in North America, including access and our self-service capabilities. Very cool. And uh, before I let you go, John, if you had one piece of advice for the folks on this webinar, what would it be? So I think that digital transformation is really a term that gets thrown around a lot. And many of the participants on today's webinars companies might be going through digital transformations themselves. But if you really have a reason to believe that your digital experience is underperforming with respect to your business strategy and goals, you should define what digital transformation means for your organization, just like Motorola did with our three coordinated tracks. It's really important to ensure you have the proper level of leadership, commitment, uh, sponsorship, and support, as well as alignment across the overall program and uh, the functions that are supporting the program. From there, you can kind of identify a roadmap that sees incremental improvements over time, starting with some quick wins. And make sure that your systems allow for measurement so you can measure and demonstrate progress. One other thing I want to mention related to search, you know, one of the biggest concerns I personally had when we were looking at launching a new search experience was that our data or our content was in such a state that we really would see limited effectiveness from even a new search tool. And what I came to learn is that while it's a definitely best practice to ensure that your data in your source systems is clean and as accurate as possible, a search platform like Caveo can offer a variety of ways through index design that can take your search experience to the next level very quickly, while also affording you some of the additional time to do the data and content cleanup in the background. All of that cleanup is not necessarily a pre pre excuse me, prerequisite to launch a much improved search experience. Very cool. Well, John, thank you. I mean, it's a wonderful story, and we look forward to obviously being a, a continued sustaining partner to support you on it. Uh, congratulations to you and the team. It's a, it's a great experience. Um, I'm going to move on a little bit and perhaps then try and uh, give the folks on the webinar a sense of how we could uh, potentially help them as well. So. With that, uh, if you'll indulge me uh, for a couple of minutes, you know, how do we help organizations on their own digital transformation initiatives? Fundamentally, if you think of Caveo, we do three things. We really help drive revenue growth uh, by helping commerce teams, people like sales and marketing and the like, deliver more engaging, personalized experiences uh, that offer things like more tailored uh, product recommendations, uh, you know, uh, better suggestions as to what to add to cart and so on to really drive sales conversions, to improve upsells and cross-sells, and, and fundamentally power revenue growth. We also help organizations that are trying to improve how they service their customers. We know full well that many of us, as, again, as consumers, prefer to be able to self-service. And if we can't find what we're looking for, you know, yes, we may end up contacting a contact center in an agent environment, but, but principally, all those elements of service drive customer satisfaction. So how can we help improve the customer satisfaction rates and the, you know, the net promoter scores that you have from your customers by providing more engaging uh, content, more relevant inf information to people when they're looking to troubleshoot and, and find answers, and, and you know, enable you to be more responsive to those customers when they do so. And then the third leg of this stool is really looking inside the organization itself. So how to help your own employees within the workplace be able to access information that builds up their own body of knowledge, enabling them to become more proficient uh, in ultimately servicing the customer as well. These things are not separate, though. And I think one of the things we see with many organizations is that initiatives tend not to be joined up. They tend to be siloed. You know, what you heard from John and the team was they looked at an overall program as saying, you know, what's the engagement piece? What's the support piece? What's the commerce piece? And they looked at it holistically across the customer journey. If you put your customer at the heart of this and understand that 
they are going to be building a relationship with you that may start with, you know, an initial transaction is one that will need to be serviced and supported uh, and that there are employees within the organization that are there for the service and provision of, of, of honoring what those customers have signed up for. Uh, all of the information stored within all these different systems can be put to work. All of the content within the different uh, serv systems that support them, things like websites, uh, information repositories, self-service portals, intranets, and the like. Caveo connects to all of that information and joins it together in a way that makes it discoverable and enables us to recommend the most relevant content for each individual in each interaction that they have, whether they're shopping, whether they're looking to self-service, or whether they're looking to learn something within your own organization as well. John and his team started on a journey that really began with the, you know, looking at the website. Uh, but beyond websites, Caveo touches several other points as well. And we typically see, uh, as you saw with John and the team, companies don't try and tackle everything at once. Digital transformation is a journey. And again, knowing where you want to go is, is, is you know, three quarters of the battle. Uh, so typically what we see is that customers may decide to plot what they're going to go tackle. Maybe they want to improve how customers can self-service through doing things like improving self-service portals for their customers, their partners, their channels. Another popular area we see a lot of our customers look for help on is helping drive more you know, let's call it case deflection, if you like, but the ability to really lower the cost of service, especially for things that might be a bit more repetitive, uh, and, and move those into online, you know, chat-based, web-based uh, work streams that don't necessarily require taking up a person's time on the end of a phone or, or a chat session. Things like more deeper integration into CRM systems, contact relationship management systems, whether that's you know, Salesforce, Service Cloud, whether that's Microsoft Dynamics 365, whether that's ServiceNow, et cetera, how to enable support engineers, service personnel to really understand the journeys your customers have been on and equally be uh, prompted with the most relevant information that is likely to help them answer the problem at hand for those customers that do talk to them. But we see a lot of folks engaging in things like conversational interfaces, experimenting with how to use things like chat and chat box to improve the commerce con conversion, to improve the self-service conversion, and, and really provide that additional channel of interaction that so many customers prefer. If we go back to where we started, a lot of these experiences are being driven by expectations from the consumer. So much consumer messaging is... Uh, has emerged and is now standard, that engaging in those channels for business-to-business -business relationships is just as important. What's equally important is not to do them separately and siloed, but to make it part of an overall platform that is informing and is being informed by all the other interactions that are taking place across these other channels. If your systems aren't learning what content is relevant from high volume channels like your website or your e-commerce store and using that information to recommend what might be requested through a chatbot, uh, you're missing a trick. We're seeing a lot of organizations build this capability actually into their product itself, whether that's an app because their business revolves around an app uh, or an online uh, site or service. Uh, you know, an example of that, uh, there are several companies who are embedding the capability for customers to find their way inside their own product. And obviously, as we said, from an internal point of view, ensuring that folks within the organization can take advantage of this capability as well. But why? Well, you know, the honest answer is it has real business benefits. Uh, here are just a few examples of some customers that have seen really meaningful movements in their own business metrics to, uh, you know, that translate into you know, dollars or pounds or euros, depending where you're calling in from. Uh, like, for example, Salesforce seeing a, you know, a two-day reduction in how long it takes them to service customers and a 16% increase in you know, how long their agents stick around because they're happier doing their jobs. You know, Logitech seeing a three-fold increase in case deflection. Informatica seeing, you know, a five-point lift in their CSAT score. So, you know, all of these things have a meaningful impact on your bottom line because you're responding to the way that customers are expecting to be engaged with.
John mentioned that uh, in his journey of evaluating vendors, they uh, turned to Gartner. You know, we're obviously very pleased to be uh, the leader in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for Insight Engines and have been two years in a row. Uh, so, you know, Gartner defines this category as Insight Engines are distinguished by their capability to deliver insights in context to the right person in the right place at the right time. And if you think of that, what does that mean? You know, it's exactly what we do across all those different use cases to drive more personalized, relevant experiences every time someone interacts with your company, whether they're a prospect, whether they're a longstanding customer, uh, or whether they're somebody inside the company looking to do something, you know, be better in their role. Uh, so I guess as a next step, <coughs> excuse me, uh, as a next step, uh, there is indeed uh, an ultimate guide to site search user experience for the folks that are on this webinar. You can feel free to um, download it from the URL here. And in fact, there is a, uh, I believe the capability is that if you live click on this, uh, you'll be able to uh, download it right now and uh, pop it open in a, you know, an adjacent window in your browser. Uh, so I would just like to, to thank John and the team for sharing the story. Uh, thank you for uh, being on the line and open up for questions. So, Karen, I'll hand back to you. Thanks so much, Mark. Yes, uh, audience, you can't click on the link on that slide, but what I just did was sent you a live link that has opened up in a pop-up window in another tab for you. So if you have your pop-up blockers on, you might see a little note up there in your uh, navigation bar that tells you a pop-up was blocked. Go ahead and either undo that or click on the link in there. And if you have your pop-up blocker disabled for the webinar, um, which we do recommend, then you should see another tab that open up, and it'll take you right to the registration page for this great guide um, to help you understand better uh, how to uh, deal with your own uh, website search issues. So uh, thank you so much, Mark, and thanks to the Coveo team for supplying us with that. And thank you so much to John Rossman as well for uh, sharing his story about Motorola Solutions' own experience uh, in, on this digital transformation journey. So as we let everyone know, we have saved some time for some Q&A with you. And John and Mark are both here to answer your questions. We've got a few coming in. So if you've been thinking about submitting a question and thought maybe we wouldn't have time, go ahead and do that because we do have a little bit of time. And I do want to get right to it because we have some great questions coming in. So let me start with the first one. What I'm going to do is pull it up here in our slide window, and then I'm going to direct or ask either John or Mark to start us on this. So John, it looks like this one's going to be directed to you first. I'll read it out loud for you. How long did the search for a tool take, and how long did the implementation take? How many people were on the team, et cetera? So there might be some proprietary information there, but maybe if you could just give us some um, highlights of, of how the search was undertaken and, and uh, how many people were involved across departments, maybe that will be helpful to our attendees. Sure, yeah, no problem. As far as how long did the search for the tool take, uh, I, I mean, I think we really could have done it within the course of a month. Um, so I'd say that was about the time it took. may have been a little bit longer than that. The implementation, um, I would, I'm not remembering exactly the date timeline, but I would say the implementation was, I mean, we had a pretty robust implementation. Your implementation can be simple. Ours was a little bit more complex because of the number of sources that we wanted to index, as well as the different experiences we wanted to have across our different regional websites. So that added some complexity, and I would say that took about four months. Uh, but I think three to four months. And then the number of people that were involved was actually much lower than you would expect. Any time we wanted to index a source, uh, to pull that source into our search results, we needed to engage sort of the technical lead from that source to help with the index design. Uh, but we worked with a, a few developers at Coveo and, a, a, you know, a few tech, uh, technical leads at Motorola. But overall, I said the team was six to ten people max, each with varying responsibilities, the, um, and in some cases not everyone had quite as much to do as others, but overall there were probably about 10 people engaged. 
Mark, how about from the Coveo team's perspective? How long should an implementation of this type of uh, tool take and what should be involved? Sure. In? Yeah, I think John nailed it, which is, uh, you know, how long is a piece of string? Uh, the, 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 the factors are how many different types of, um, repositories are you going to go and connect to? You know, Coveo has, you know, 100 plus standardized connectors straight out of the box that makes connecting to a lot of common repositories very straightforward. But we also have a number of tools that are used by our own development team or our customers' development teams or the partners that they engage with to write things that we don't have a connector for. And, and those tend to be, you know, maybe there's a, I don't know, a 15-year-old legacy CRM system that no one touches, you know, no one dare touch. The guys who built it long moved on and it just works. But you really want data from it to be fed into Caveo so that Caveo has comprehensive in, uh, access to it. That would be an example of, you know, a bespoke piece of, of, of API development that, uh, or the development that someone would use to connect to our APIs in order to feed that information in. Those tend to be the things that extend a project timeline, but standardized connections are, you know, pretty much straight out the box. And so, you know, a typical web implementation you know, we see done in a large, complex organization, you know, in a month or two. And for simplistic ones, uh, you know, a matter of weeks. All right, great. We had a couple of questions around uh, how Coveo hooks into or, I guess, integrates with different tools. So um, this one specifically I'll put up, but I'll, I'll mention a couple of the other systems that they asked about. How does Coveo hook into Microsoft SharePoint for search? And someone else had also asked about Workday Learning. So maybe you can cover yeah. that, Mark. Sure, gladly. Uh, so SharePoint is obviously a very common repository and, and the many flavors of it. Uh, that uh, many organizations have, especially if you, if you, you have a, 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 you know, a, a Microsoft uh, architecture. And we find many of our organizations are actually using Coveo to unify multiple instances of SharePoint content, various, you know, versions of it, uh, SharePoint Online, SharePoint, uh, you know, servers that again were, were built years ago and are just sort of sitting in the bowels of an IT organization somewhere. So we have standard connectors to connect to, uh, to Microsoft SharePoint instances that enable us, you know, obviously with credentials to be able to index the content in them and pull them through. Uh, likewise for Workday and a, a host of them. Um, workflow and ERP systems as well. We also have some generic connectors that enable us to connect to things like um, databases. So very frequently we may find that, you know, an organization just at the heart of it has a relation, relational database or a SQL database that they simply want Caveo to index. And there we use our, our generic database connectors. Uh, we also have REST API connectors that really enable us to connect to pretty much anything else that, you know, if there's a service that we can couple to, we can go and index. So between the things that we have out of the box and the open development tools that we have, the, the, we haven't found a data source structured or unstructured that we can't go to. I, I might build on it for a second because obviously a lot of that implies you know, very sort of structured data in databases and, and workflows and systems. But a lot of information is, is much less structured, indeed entirely unstructured. And there you think of things like, you know, videos in a YouTube channel. Well, again, you know, if you have videos in a YouTube channel and we have the credentials, you know, obviously your admin credentials, we can index those for you as well. So the variety of content and where it lives really isn't an obstacle. Great. Let's look at this next question. It's more about um, the, the machine learning behind Coveo, Mark. So I'm going to stick with you on this, mm -hmm. and, and then we'll let Mark, uh, we'll let, uh, excuse me, John chime in as well in terms of how Motorola approached this. But how does Coveo determine what's relevant for a visitor? So maybe some of the sure. factors that go into the learning. Yeah, it's a good point. I, I should probably just uh, maybe preempted to say that obviously machine learning and artificial intelligence, AI, all these words, they're all banded around. And, and I think, you know, as someone looking to evaluate software, you're inundated with this terminology and everyone's claiming that they, you know, solve world hunger and cure cancer and whatever else with AI. We have a very narrow view, which is we use certain AI technologies, particularly machine learning, natural language processing and others, to, to find relevance in content. And the way we do that principally is 
by understanding what people have found useful by observing behavior. Uh, practically, every time someone interacts with content on your website, on your self-service portal, on your intranet, be they external or internal to your organization, they are effectively giving signals as to their journeys, what they interacted with, what they found useful, where they went back, what else they searched for. We track all of that and we feed it at scale into our machine learning capabilities to learn, if you like, from the wisdom of crowds, what is most relevant for certain behavioral circumstances. Because we understand all the content that you have and we're tracking all of those interactions and those signals of people engaging with that content, combining it with their overall search and web journeys, we're able to predict what people are likely to need next. You saw some of that in the examples that John popped up where things like suggesting certain queries that might be helpful for people, those are driven by machine learning algorithms that are looking at what people ended up going to having made countless searches and being able to predict, therefore, that a certain you know, query suggestion may be more valuable than another. And really, the goal there is to save people time and get them to the outcome that they're focused on. So we're constantly looking at what they did and using that to feed back into the machine learning in an unsupervised fashion that just keeps getting better. John, you want to share a little bit of your experience um, in terms of uh, the factors that went into uh, what you guys were looking to do in terms of personalizing content for your visitors? Sure. So Mark spoke to kind of the machine learning engine and, and how that works. Some of the other aspects that I touched on with respect to contextualized results for a particular user. Um, you know, our particular implementation used an index design that for a logged in user, we're able to identify characteristics about that user in order to present content that's relevant to that particular user of a particular type. So when you work um, with Coveo, you'll actually do sort of that index design activity, which will sort of help you put together a search experience that especially with a logged in user, is able to identify the user and then present results relevant to that particular user. So that's another way that you can present relevant kind of user level content. Um, and then also in our case where I talked about different regional sites presenting different content, we, it's the same search user interface but configured on a site by site basis to present relevant sources. So. The example I gave of shop.motorolasolutions.com is a North America only shop. Well, we only use that as a source on our North America site, whereas if someone were to perform a search, let's say on our European site, it's not going to index um, that particular site. So in addition to some of the machine learning and the relevance that that supports, there's configuration options you can do as well with respect to the authenticated user, um, and that index design that you can use to present what you believe to be the most relevant result, uh, results to the user. Yeah, hey, Karen, and, and just to build on John's point there, John, you raised a really interesting uh, observation about the fact that, you know, a lot of your customers, if they're logged in, obviously that enables you to deliver more personalized, relevant content to them. Probably worth you know, underlining, I think a lot of the people on this call would have those kind of questions, which is, you know, there's obviously a big difference between people who you can authenticate uh, using your single sign-on versus uh, anonymous visitors to the site. And, and we understand at Caveo the, the fundamental importance of security and adhere to all of those permissions that your own businesses would have with regard to what permissions are in, you know, allowed for different groups within an organization, perhaps different types of logins, uh, different customer levels, and so on. So, of course, making sure that uh, the, the security associated to those roles is also respected in filtering out and making sure that the right content is available for the right people. Great. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for that follow-up. So, John, I want to come back to you, though, because this sort of follows on to this whole idea of, uh, of creating, creating the system and creating the rules that work for your potential audience and targeting your different audiences. Do, 
is it complex to manage rules with Coveo? So, John, would you start and sort of share some of your experience with that, and then we'll we'll get Mark's view on how the how the company has sort of set it up. Sure. So there, you have the ability to manage rules within the Coveo admin console, and Coveo offers administrator training. Um, I myself, who am somewhat technical, but I haven't really, I mean, I was a developer many moons ago, but so I have some technical acumen, but I'm not as involved with the technical aspects of things today. You know, I myself, I'm able to go in and use that featured results capability. So I can identify a term for which I want to have a particular result featured, and that's something that I'm able to configure myself. So I believe uh, that it's not difficult, and especially with the Caveo administrator training, it should be something that most people, as far as a rule management perspective, should be able to handle. Mark, you want to jump in on that and sort of ex explain sure. a little bit yeah, from maybe, Caveo's point of view? Yeah, maybe just to round it out. You know, one of the things that uh, John alluded to there as well is obviously that the admin interface uh, I mean, we've designed that admin interface to be for Caveo admins, not for people who are you know, building software. It needs to be easy to use, and, and that's what we strive for. Uh, and, and so from a rule management point of view, the ability to, for example, boost something. Uh, let's say you have a new product that comes out, and you know there isn't necessarily much data or prehistory for the machine learning to take advantage of, you of course want to be able to have manual rules that would boost or announce or promote a new product. And, and we find particularly in shopping environments that you know, the merchandisers really want very tight control over the rules that govern you know, what shows up first, almost in, in, in a Google-esque you know, ads versus organic fashion. But, you know, if you've got 100,000 or a million stock keeping units or SKUs, you also want to make sure that the machine learning is taking care of the rest of that as well. And so that balance between having manual control over rules that you want to promote and the machine learning that deals with kind of the rest of the catalog that you don't have the time to look at gives a really nice balance for people. All right, great. So let's try and get one more in here. And again, to talk about from a business user perspective, and Mark, I'll let you start with this. How about the analytics? Can a business user use it? You know, who is the ideal user yeah. for Cobeo? Is it IT? Is it business user? Who is it? Uh, yeah, it's it's the business users. You know, this thing needs to live and breathe. And so from an analytics standpoint, we build in a lot of dashboards straight out of the box that enable uh, our our customers to be able to see you know, what content's working, what's not, where there are gaps, uh, where they're seeing uh, usage pick up, what geographies, uh, a lot of standard analytics uh, reports and dashboards straight in the interface that are simply point and click, as well as the ability to create custom dashboards that, you know, would be unique to your business and tailored accordingly. We, you know, as John mentioned, we, we have a customer success team that works super closely with our customers after the implementation to continue to refine dashboards and to make sure ports are set up that really meet the needs of the business. So short answer is, you know, that, that cliche of what's not measured isn't managed. We measure everything and that gives you the ability to manage it as well. John, did, uh, was that Motorola's experience? Did you find that your business users were able to use the, are, are able to use the tool pretty easily and get the insights that they need out of it? Yeah, absolutely. Caveo does offer a, a, a analytics training as well. It is not something that I took, but I dove in uh, head and feet first, if that's possible, uh, into the analytics dashboard and was really able to navigate and kind of get the information that uh, I needed out of it uh, without too much trouble. So I think it is intuitive to the average business user. And then anytime I did have a question or wanted a little more information on how, on what something meant, I could work directly with my success customer success manager. So my experience with the analytics has been excellent, both in its usability as well as just the breadth of data that is available. All right, great. Well, thank you, John and Mark, for answering all of those questions. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have today. Uh, Thank you, audience, for submitting many of those questions, and uh, you've given us all some great food for thought. 
And uh, as I just said, I want to thank Mark and John for a very informative and timely presentation. I want to give a special thank you to our sponsor, Coveo, which you can visit at www.coveo.com. And uh, as we've made available to you, you've got this ultimate guide to site search user experience. Make sure you fill out that registration page and download uh, that uh, valuable resource for your own efforts at your business. That's all for our broadcast today. We look forward to seeing you next time right here at Digital Marketing Depot.